five, four, three, two, one. We're going live. So what we're going to do today is talk you through um, from scratch how to grab an object and make it move along an animated path. Um, think of cars moving along a road in a predetermined way. Think of trains around tracks. Uh, think of roller coaster rides, things like that, where you need to make the car of the roller coaster move along the track um, and how to animate it without animation. So this doesn't touch on anything that you need to animate. We're going to use some tricks. So to begin with, we're going to open up or uh, open up a new scene. I've already done that and just create a ground plane. Focus on that wherever it's disappeared to. Why isn't it coming up in my scene? It's because I'm on the game screen. Let's switch to the scene. There we go. Um, we just want to color that for reasons you'll see in a moment that it's not very good showing it as white because we need to see something that's going to happen on top. So I just need to get to my folder where I've created a material, just a ground material, drag that over. Now black. And we're going to play around with Cinema Machine, Dolly Cart and Dolly Track. Um, the Cinema Machine, machine component in, sign, in Unity isn't just specific to manipulating cameras. It can also um, move objects along a Dolly Cart that a camera can follow. Um, in sign space terms, it means we can put you on a train and move you around the track and the, your view, your camera view, will follow you around as it normally does. We've created a ground plane. We're now going to create, uh, sorry, we're going to add the Cinema Machine component from the Cinema Machine menu at the top here. It's the bottom option, create dolly track with cart. And the Cinema Machine smooth path script is what we need to work with. And here, are things called waypoints. For those that don't know, a waypoint is a device, an object, a thing, a point that you can say point one, point two, point three, and you can animate something moving between point one, point two, point three in a straight line or in a curve, um, dependent on how you set the waypoints. So to show you, I'm just going to move the width of the track up a little bit so we can see it easily. We're going to add our first waypoint. Hasn't done much on the screen, but we click there. OK. So we're way off from where the plane is. Did that didn't land in uh, zero? It's because your plane's not at zero, yeah. Yeah, we're just going to zero that out so it's in the right position. Now we can go back to these new components that were just added from the Cinema Machine menu. The cart is not, um, we're not going to worry about the cart at the moment, but that's the object that we're going to move around. For now, we need to create the track first on the dolly track. So we've got our first waypoint and it's this, these two uh, gizmos here. One is the gizmo itself. The other handle would be the adjustment of the curve and the position and such, much like you'd manipulate um, a vector type graphic. So um, that can be our starting point. We'll create a second waypoint there and move that along a bit. Um, now, just by manipulating these two points, we can begin to see that we're getting a path. I'm going to move them down and click on this one and come down and um, we add a third path and now we need to manipulate this so that it's uh, kind of there we go see it starts to form a circular bend when you move it to the right axis uh, add another waypoint here do the same thing again and move it a little bit more drastically. And we now click uh, looped here. Make sure that's checked and it joins it together. So you can see that we've got a, a very rough circle, um, worst circle you'll ever see, but an interesting shape where we can animate something around it. What are we going to put on there to make it move? We are going to add a cube here put that somewhere on the track and 
turn it into the uh, rotate it into the right direction there um this cube is our what we're going to call the dolly cart so we don't need that one that's automatically added we've got it here so i would normally create the cube and then i would add a dolly car onto the cube so unity is a bit funny on that i'm going to delete that one that was created automatically here and then tell um, the system that this cube is an item on the uh, on the track so dolly cart there so instead of having the components separately here where it was created it's just added it on to the cube object now the trick is copying or dragging the dolly track to the path in the cart which links the two together so that the cube knows where it can and can't travel uh, we then set a speed which for now will Uh, the position you can make it start from any waypoints so the position will be expecting zero one to however many waypoints you've got kind of thing uh, that's a lot of uh, it's it's kind of that simple um let's just press play and you'll see what we get And it decides to there we go and that's now animating if we go to the scene rather than the game view you can see it moving around the path smoothly following the contours etc back in the game view so you would imagine that the plane has been you need to substitute the plane for a meaningful ground with the track on and then uh, obviously substitute the cube with a vehicle or something like that if you do that then you can do this not so sure it's going to work it's not finished but this is a project i'm working on i'll show you what we've got so far with it again once everything wakes up and runs We're getting there we're getting there it's just the game scene is on the other screen and i've got to wait for it to wake up so i can bring it across is that got it not yet some of you might reckon that recognize this as uh dust fail which is on the live grid there we go so the intention is that you will jump into the uh, driving seat which is clickable there and then you get a stop and a go button and you would press the green button to actually go however that's not functional yet but I think with a little bit of plan around I can trigger it to work hold on we need to remove the collider that's in here somewhere. Very much an unfinished project, but you, you hopefully can see where it's uh, where it's going to end up signaling. There it is, the collider, and I do believe stop that and go back in. Remove. Very stubborn train today. Uh, get the next bit. Yeah, probably not. Not good that I tried to show you something that I'm still working on that was broken last night. I have, however, 
got a sneaky uh, screen grab of it actually working. So I can show you that instead. Once I can get to my Gaussio, my images. Do, 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 do. There, I think. There you go. Uh, obviously, there's a little bit more to it than I've shown you. It's a very simple sort of um, method that, that I've shown you. There's a lot of tweaks that you might need to make if you want the path to follow a certain odd shape, not just a circle. Um, you can alter it. You can make it fit any track you like. You can make it go up and down. You can even make the the um, pathway, the road, the track tilt to the right or tilt to the left, depending on the um, the angle of the curve of the road and things like that. And you can extend this to um, fairground rides, uh, for example, a roundabout. A simple roundabout is just four objects being moved at the same speed around a circle. Uh, when you get okay, you can you can actually ride the train. Mm, it's on preview, but it's not working fully. But I expect it to be on live and actually function in about a week's time. Void uh, just uh, brought up an actual something that might be an issue is the networking mm -hmm. have you is the is the sim machine dolly networked no um i actually don't know but i don't think it is i'm i'm pretty sure i've got a network at myself yeah um but i'll i'll use the the known way of doing it to trigger it but i'll ch test it first as possible sin machine uh sin machine can actually knows about it i'll yeah. update you but there you go, simple short tutorial just to give you an introduction to what Cinemachine can achieve that isn't actually relating to a camera in the traditional sense. Yeah, well, if it, if it can be networked, it, it, it could be really useful. I, I'd probably use it quite a lot because the, the Cinemachine yes. camera dolly is designed to kind of be the smoothest moving thing you can get in Unity. Um, yeah, that's but it's what, that's calculating always... the angles itself and yeah, it's going... All curve element it does that perfectly but it's been designed to like make movies so it's got to be absolutely yeah. perfect no jumping or anything yeah. well there's talk now um i don't like speaking of competition but the unreal game engine is now being made, uh, used to make movies and tv shows for top studios um the mandalorian the circular um, panoramic effect they've got that's not using green screen is apparently generated in Unreal Engine. Yeah, yeah, they they, okay. they actually... More, Unity will catch up as well because Unity's got some fantastic cinema effects as well. Just look at some of the, the Heretic um, on YouTube is a promotional video of um, Unity. It's just amazing. So at some point, um, it's going to make game engines indistinguishable from a movie editing program and, and things like that they'll be done in the same product yeah the mandalorian was the first one that was done it's, it's actually using real screens so the, yeah. the, act, the actor sees what everybody's seeing basically he, he doesn't just see a green screen he actually sees it going on behind him which is kind of cool 
I think it's because yeah. the screen uh, technology has got so good and they've got so big screens now and OLED. Yeah. And all. Uh, to answer Site's question, yes, the asset is a couple of sort of Western sort of um, themed packs from Cinti Studios who've got a lot of products in our shop, but I got hold of this off the asset store before um, we'd actually had an agreement with Cinti. But I do like their stuff. Um, the, the Western one particularly, um, the, the low poly lends itself to this and it just looks quite amazing, even though it is low poly. Uh, the smoke and the sparks and such are particle effects. And when the um, when the green button is pressed on the train and the train starts moving, only then does the smoke and the sparks actually start. And if the train comes to rest, they'll stop as well. But we can revisit the details once I've actually written them um, in a couple of three weeks' time. Uh, don't forget, next week we've got Adam um, coming in for a monthly roundup. Um, no idea what he'll talk about, but we never do. He just turns up and he talks at us. <laughs> yeah. um, but that's something to look forward to. And obviously we've got community hours tomorrow. Um, and hopefully for those that didn't come earlier, we've got hold of the new product we've made internally to onboard new users. And we'd be looking at um, looking for you guys to actually look at it and give us your opinions and your thoughts on it before we, before Zoo and I can actually um, customise it for the public grid. Uh, he might be quite delighted in telling you some of the things lately about the progress, but I don't know if we're ready to actually push that button on that particular item just yet. But the super light going to the staging server, uh, another general announcement for everybody that wasn't here earlier, um, there are new builds going on in the staging server at the moment. If you feel like trying them, please be aware they do not connect to the old network system that we're on at the moment. They are running the new Superlight version that everybody's going to be moved to um, shortly. So if you try the new viewer, the staging viewer, you won't see anybody that's on the this normal live viewer and vice versa. I think that's everything. Is there any last minute things anybody wants to ask about um, before we head off for today? Very welcome, guys. <laughs>